What's up guys, Weather Expert here, bringing you guys an awesome video on a winter weather update, and I'm going to be discussing the Bering Sea storm that's going to be coming into the Bering Sea, why am I, why I just say I sound like a complete idiot, but you guys, we're going to start off with a storm, a humongous mid-latitude cyclone as we call it, you guys can see that, you can see the cyclonic flow coming inward for the inflow, we got the out, we got, you know, you can just see the cyclonic of the cold air coming down towards warm air, Create the di differentiating temperatures, and then you get the air to rise, it's forced upward as it converges. And when that happens, you get a, some pressure that you get the pressure to drop, and basically you can get these type of storms. And if there's a lot of moisture, if there's a lot of mo um, temperature differentiating, can lead to a, some pretty intense pressure drops, and that's what's happening with this storm. But one of the things I want to show you guys is what's going to be happening to the pattern as the storm lifts northward. Well, let's get into our 500 millibar um, heights. Here's our storm right here, 36 hours out. Um, a little more, a little bit of an energy transfer happens from the storm, and what that leads to do is some um, troughiness to develop right here. You get a little energy, you get the cold air starting to get from polar regions. That's going to create some pretty cold air. We start seeing it strengthen. We got the next storm up here, which is causing our, um, our northern plains snowstorm. And then what happens is it kind of, you know, kind of ties in with it. The energy kind of ties in with it. But then it eventually heads southward. And we um, basically, we get, um, if you go to the 150 temperature anomalies, we basically get some cold air driven into the U.S. And this is what I've been talking about. The 18th and through the 20th is what's going to happen is you're going to get some cold air. We got about, you know, we got, I got 67 degrees today. And by the time we get to this point, it'll probably be like 20 degrees. So it's going to be pretty darn impressive what's going to happen. You guys can see that we start seeing this. Now, what's interesting is the interaction. You see this little um, positively tilted trough, really positively tilted. Yeah, at the end of these, at the end of this, I kind of usually monitor these because it's coming from um, it's what we call Alberta Clipper. Even though it's not coming from Alberta, it's coming from the direction of Alberta. And these can produce, you know, a quick, you know, a little snow event. And that's what the GFS now has. Even though it's far out, I like looking at this. And what you can see is you can decipher. You got a positive PNA. You got you know ne you got a negative EPO though. Um, but what's going to happen is we're going to start seeing a pretty good pattern change setting up develop. We're not going to get these 67 degree temperatures really anymore. It's pretty much done, done and done. Christmas week. Let's go. Out, let's go far out. Here's about 22. Um, I mean it says a Christmas Eve storm for the um, planes right here. Here's a Christmas Eve right here. We get over here, you know, you get a low, low pressure, you get the, you get an upper level ridge develop, and that sucks. I hate upper level ridges, but it's still far out. We get out towards Christmas Day. This is when you're about to open your presents, probably. So it's a big, humongous, humongous pattern change. Even for like not really big pattern change yet. A big trough out west, ridge out east. Sucks for the east right now, but you know that can change. But really, not just looking for anything major until we get out in time. But basically, this can change a lot, but look at this thing. This is like a monster of a storm. I mean, it kind of weakens as it gets over here, but let's look at the 850 temperature anomalies. And you guys see that cold air comes in. We get a rebound in temperatures. We get, um, this is what's happening. We're getting temperature swings. Um, let's go to my um, hotspot map, and this is what I've been pointing out um, for the Midwest. Now, what's the reason behind this? Well, I'm going to show you guys. What's going to have equal chances? Basically, means that you can have equal chance of getting a hotspot, or um, if you're in more towards the um, um, quiet part, you'll probably get more quiet as you get later on in the season. Right now, you guys are going to get some pretty good snowstorms, but once that happens, you're going to shut off. You're going to get a sun storm track as we get later in the winter, and you're going to get some nice sun sliders to develop. And that's why. So I'm going to um, draw this out for you guys. And if you guys are, if you guys can tell what I'm saying is um, basically. You get a storm track that might go like this one time. You might get a storm track that goes like this. Basically, you're setting up snows across this area, um, and you get the cold air to develop, and that's why it's gonna be quiet over here. You're getting cold air intrusions. You're gonna, um, you're pretty much just gonna push the cold, the storm track southward over here. And basically, you're just gonna have a quiet and cold, quiet, quiet and cold, out um, up here. Really, it's just gonna be pretty quiet up here. Lakes. Really uh, uh, below average, and if you live like down here, I extend right now. I forecast for like the um, Midwest is more you know south, southern regions, but you know it can tie into the Great Lakes, you know Ohio Valley. So basically, I forecast for the Ohio Valley. I forecast in the Northeast too because a lot of my followers are there, and I do have a quite a bit of followers in the, um, Illinois, of course, because I live there. But anyways, cold air intrusions basically come in, um, shift storm tracks south. Um, Basically, what happens is we get a big when you get cold air, 
You get storm track. Guess what you get? You get moisture. You get moisture converging with cold air. You can get some um, pretty active snow over here as we get later on the season. Now the Bering Sea rule says 17, about two to three weeks after that storm departs or weakens. Um, or forms in the Barrington Sea, we basically can see a big storm setting up, maybe towards New Year's. I'm not saying that, but that's Barrington Sea, Barrington sea rule, and I'm seeing the possibility of that. But let's get, let's, um, I don't want to make this video like 20 hours long, so let's get right into like the real juice. Here's our trough right here, causing severe weather, um, hit Texas pretty hard with like a, probably an EF2 tornado, I'd say. Um, prayers go to them. Um, I kind of, I kind of forecast that, of course, there's always got to be a lawn track tornado. Not really long track, but it's a pretty strong tornado for a December month, and it's in Texas. So basically, got the got the storm up here. It's gonna come up here. Energy transfer has head south. Get some of that polar air in. You get some pretty nice temperatures, and you can see some pretty cool stuff. And now we're gonna talk about more about the El Nino. Oh boy, this is gonna take a while. This I hope not. I don't want to take too long. Let's go to the anomalies and let's go to the sea surface temperatures. Alright, let's turn that off. And what the heck am I seeing here? It's still pretty strong. Well, guess what? It already peaked. You know why? Because 3.4 is flatline. 3.4 and 1.2 are flatline. When that happens, there's no spikes. There's no, you know, when there you want if you have spikes and you have drops, basically that means that it's still active. Right now it's flatline, which means there's not a lot of environmental factors right now to um, keep it going really. So it's really just gonna start slowly going down and rapidly going down. Just slap my keyboard. But you guys can get see what I'm saying, and then we go to sea surface temperatures, and of course I've been we've been pointing this out for a while. You can see some, you know, basically you know what the Peruvian current we've been talking about for a while. Upwells this um, water over here, and that's we're starting to see that we get the we get the water, um, so we get the warm water shift over here. You get a lot of convection um, to pop up. We get a sun storm track. You can get some moisture, and boom, you get a big winter setting up later on in the season. Now for the northeast. I'm probably gonna make a hotspot map soon, but I basically pay attention to long, more along the coast right now. Um, basically, it's gonna be interior, and then it's gonna be along the coast as we get some wild storms coming in. But let's go to the more in depth. What am I seeing here? See this little gray spot? That's not really um, uh, that's not really computer error. That's actual evidence of it starting to weaken. You can see some green splotches in there. That means the sea surface temperature is starting to take effect. The upwellings are starting to take effect. It's upwelling, and basically, you're starting to see some below average temperatures. It's going to work into the region, and it's just going to just kill it. Now, this is a very interesting thing I like to see. This is validation of what's upwelling is going to happen. Basically, if you go downwards, that's further down the ocean. If you go upwards, that's basically, you know, that's basically pretty much, you know, <laughs> I just made myself look stupid. Basically, this is surface. It's down in the deep blue sea, really. So we have the warm water up in near the surface. That's where you're seeing the sea surface temperature anomalies. That's why it's saying right there, the equatorial. And then we get over here. What's this little blue blob? That's below our temperatures. And you can see it's starting to push up. And it's becoming under the 125, 110 meters, um, 110 meters right now. And it just keeps, continues to go up. And when that happens, when that, when that pretty much just gets up there, it's done for the El Nino. It's gone. It's going to start the weekend. We're going to maybe see a transit to a La Nina. And La Ninas are always fun. El Ninos are a pain in the butt for um, hurricanes. I am a hurricane lover. I'm a winter storm lover. I'm a severe weather lover. Most likely, I'm basically hurricane slash winter. This is great for hurricane lovers if you want to see this. Um, it's bad for people that are forecasting a warm winter. That's what I'm going to say about this. But I'm getting approaching 10 minutes. But really, want to, I want to show you guys that. Um, this because I want to show you how active it's going to start um, to how active it's going to be as we get into the second half of winter when we start seeing that Arctic air displace and we start seeing the polar vortex starting to get displaced it gets those 500 millibar geopotential heights and then it basically sets up a storm track and not to mention we got the pretty much steroids off the coast we got some pretty good sea surface temperature anomaly um, indices on in the east coast which we've been talking about forever so basically, you guys see that it's upwelling. It's gonna when it gets that blue gets up there, then it's basically done. It's already starting to you know flatline and weaken really. So yeah, guys, that's really gonna wrap it up. Um, hope you guys enjoy this. Um, I really want to, but before I show you guys, so before I go, guys, I want to show you guys something. 
Let's go to where should I go? We're tracking severe weather right now, and basically what I want to show you guys is this. Let me go to tweets before you, before I go. Um, it's got um, it's coming, guys. This stuff's coming soon. Just you got you guys just have to wait. Um, it's further down. Ah, uh, where is it? All right, here's the thing. What do you think the which which is a day that I look at always for the potential of a snowstorm? The answer is Groundhog Day. I had a lot of people not answer it. Groundhog Day and New Valentine Easter. I was surprised that we only got six percent because Easter can be a big um be a big day for like severe weather, winter weather. But you know it's a it's gonna be like April. It can be crazy sometimes. Groundhog Day, we had a 2011 blizzard in my area, really. It was a pretty substantial storm. I got 15, 16 inches of snow. That was the best snowstorm I've ever went through that I can remember. 2015, fast forward to 2015, that happened in February for um, 2nd at the Super Bowl. We got about 8 inches of snow, which is still a blizzard because it, we had some blowing snow. We had cold temperatures. It started out as rain, then pretty much just went down to the powder. 27 or so degrees but yeah guys that's really gonna wrap it up hope you guys enjoyed this video um i know it's been like almost 11 minutes and 30 seconds but sorry for keeping you guys so long but i really just want to cram this in i hope you guys like long videos but i'll see you guys in the next video peace out